In our previous video, I've shown you how to extract consumer price index data from an HTML table published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And uh, we've transformed this via XQuery into a nicely structured XML document. And in this video, we're going to continue working with that data and doing some advanced charting techniques. So let's continue refining this and maybe add better labels to the category axis here, as well as uh, a selector that lets us pick which years we want to show. So in order to do that, we're going to uh, drop in two combo boxes to allow the user to pick uh, a range of years. And we will add a little label in between that says two. So it's from year and then to year. We also need to um, add to our persistent tree um, an element from and an element to. We'll probably initialize those with 2005 to 2014 to give us a good starting point. So the from element is going to be associated with this combo box. The to element is going to be associated with this combo box here. Uh, we probably want to make the center row here um, use a different column width. So we'll make that a wrap around the content. So it's just the word two in the middle. And then for the two combo boxes, we need to create a range of values. And we're simply going to say, this is going to be from 2005 to 2014. And the same is true for the other combo box. Okay, now we need to modify our chart. Maybe we'll save this whole design before we go into those details. Consumer price index. Um, now we go into the chart detail and we will restrict it to this particular year range that we just added. And the way to do that is to modify the for each x pass expression so that in addition to ensuring that we have a CPI attribute, we will also check that the y attribute is greater or equal than our from date and less than equal than our to date. And here is our expression. Maybe we will also modify the category axis labels here and simply build a string that consists of the year concatenated with a dash concatenated with the month. That should give some pretty labels. Okay, let's go ahead and test this. Go into the simulator. Um, we're starting out with years 2005 to 2014. Um, but we can now change this to 2008 to 2014. But of course, I need to reload the chart when those change. So we're going to go back to our combo boxes here. Right click them and add a control action on finish editing. And the control action is going to be to reload the chart. And we'll do that for both of these combo boxes. And the other mistake I made was that this is, of course, the attribute. Why? So that's why it didn't show. And now we have the consumer price index with a range selector for the years. So I can zoom into exactly what part of the chart I want to focus on. So maybe we'll look at exactly 2008 to 2010, and you can see the dip in the CPI during the particular uh, recent recession. Now that we have this wonderful data in such a clean format, we can actually also calculate the inflation rate from the consumer price index data. So for example, if you wanted to calculate the inflation rate um, from for 2005, for the month of January, you could simply uh, divide the CPI with the same month a year ago and then calculate the percentage increase. And that will be our inflation rate 
um, for that annual period. So let's see if we can do that and add it to the chart. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to switch the chart over to multiple layers so that I can add a second layer to my chart that shows the CPI data because I'm going to use a second different set of axes for that. So for my second layer, I'm also going to switch over to a line chart. And I'm going to um, skip the connecting shapes. And for the consumer price index, we're going to need a different axis uh, range. We're going to use a range from minus 5 to plus 10% and do tick intervals every one percentage point. The for each expression category axis is obviously shared with the main chart. And so now I just have to define how I'm going to calculate that inflation rate. We're going to call it inflation percentage. Okay. So for my inflation percentage, uh, in order to calculate that data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the simulator again. Okay, so we're going to use the XPath evaluator um, to try to construct this uh, particular expression. So what we're going to do is simply we're going to take the uh, CPI. Of course, in order for that to work, I need to go into my uh, three here preferably in the evaluator, sorry about that. And pick one particular month in my second year as my evaluation context, because that's what I'm going to see when I'm inside my for each loop in the chart. So I'm going to pick a CPI and indeed that's 190.7. And then I'm going to divide that by the same CPI a year ago. And the way I'm going to do that is that I'm going to take the parent element, so that's a year, pick its preceding sibling, so that's the previous year, its month, and then find a month where the at m attribute is the same numerical value as the current element's at m attribute, and then take that CPI. So then, if I uh, select a different month in the previous year, obviously there's no results because when I start in the first year, there is no year that's preceding that. So I have to add a little test here. I'm going to test if we can find the previous year, if this element exists, then that's my calculation. Otherwise, we're just going to return zero. So this works fine now for 2004 and for 2005, it calculates the right value. So let's turn that into a percentage. And here we have it exit the simulator, and now we're going to plot this on the chart. And go back into the simulator. And voila, we have a curve that shows us the inflation rate as a percentage. Zero is here, the axis on the right side, from minus 5 to 10. And we can view that for our entire date range and see that there was obviously a dip of the inflation rate right at the point of the recession. And then for the last couple of years, it's been steadily fluctuating between one and two in this particular window. So here you have it, a complete solution built from data that was only available as an HTML page, but we've converted it into usable XML data, nicely structured, and then used that for graphing and calculation purposes here in our mobile together solution. Thank you.